Good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick Brassard. I obtained an excellence grant from the Quebec government that allowed me to work as a postdoctoral researcher on the thermochemical conversion platform within the Cambioscope project. I was in Toulouse in 2019, and I'm now working at the IRDA in Quebec City for 2020. So the thermochemical pathway for biomass conversion is divided into two categories, so the dry process and the hydrothermal process. In my project, I focus mainly on three processes, which are calcification, pyrolysis, and hydrothermal liquefaction, or HDL. Pyrolysis is the conversion of biomass at high temperature, between 350 and 750 degrees Celsius, and without oxygen, to produce bio-oil, biochar, and non-condensable gases. Gasification occurs at a higher temperature with partial oxygen presence. HDL is a conversion of wet biomass in a hot water environment under pressure for sufficient time to produce liquid fuel. The bio-crude process is produced as a higher heating value than the one from pyrolysis. Here is an overview of the presentation. I will start with the framework for consequential life cycle assessment of pyrolysis with forestry residues. I will continue with the pyrolysis test done to generate the pyrolysis LCA data. And I will conclude with the consequential LCA framework adapted for hydrothermal liquefaction and gasification. So first, I will present the framework for consequential LCA of pyrolysis biorefinery. A paper is under review in RSCR, and the preprint is now available online. There are large amounts of residual biomasses available in France. For example, it's estimated that 42 petajoules of logging residues can be collected without reducing soil fertility. These residues can be used as feedstock for pyrolysis. However, before the selected technology, it is important to evaluate its environmental performance using a life cycle assessment. A few LC studies of pyrolysis can be found in the literature. However, these studies use allocation rules, which are often arbitrary and do not respect the mass balances of the process. Moreover, the studies are difficult to reproduce and validate because the complete life cycle inventory data set is not presented. So the main objective of the present study is to provide a generic and consistent consequential LCA framework that will be useful for decision making to quantify the environmental performance of pyrolysis biorefineries. The temporal scope of the framework is medium to long term or equivalent to about 30 years, as the results are intended to strategic investment decision. Moreover, the geographic scope is France. Here is the process flow diagram of the pyrolysis of forest residues. So the functional unit is first defined as one ton of dry biomass. This is because the objective of my postdoc project is to compare the environmental performance of different thermochemical processes. Moreover, the results per ton of stream will be handy in the Cambioscope project as the perspective is to allocate streams to conversion technologies. The system boundaries were defined from the biomass collection to the use of pyrolysis products. The biomass is first harvested at 30% water content. It is chipped in the wood and transported to a storage facility. It is grinded to less than 4 mm and dried at 10% water content prior to pyrolysis in an auger reactor. The proportion between the products is a lot process dependent. So the pyrolysis parameters and products yields and properties were determined based on previous experiments at the RDA with black spruce. The biomass properties were based on literature review and the mass balance was closed consequently. So the main product here is the biocrude oil. The vision is to produce biocrude oil for heat production in a small scale oil border in areas without access to gas grid. Other scenario 
could be studied, for example, by adapting the framework for using bio oil for steam production or for further upgrading the bio crude oil for producing transportation fuels. The other products include non-condensable gas that is expected to be used to heat pyrolysis unit, the aqueous phase of bio oil called wood vinegar that is used as a biofungicide, and a biochar that is spread in the field and contribute to sequester carbon. Then the system boundaries were expanded in order to include what is affected by the valorization of the residues and by the use of the biorefinery co-products. The processes in the dot line box are the avoided processes in the reference scenario due to pyrolysis biorefinery. Here are the impact assessment results for the climate change impact category. So the pyrolysis of one ton of residues provides a reduction of 900 kilograms of CO2 equivalent as compared to the reference scenario in which the biomass decay on soil. So a sensibility analysis was done to test different hypotheses of carbon recalcitrance in biochar. In the baseline, it was considered that 80% of carbon in biochar is recalcitrant in soil for more than 100 years. So when we consider an increased recalcitrance to 90%, the greenhouse gas savings are increased by 300 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. In total, 16 environmental impact categories were studied using the environmental footprint method. Moreover, the biogenic CO2 emissions were considered. Here are the impact categories in which the pyrosis scenario presented a trade-off. As you can see, the pyrosis and condensation is an important contributor in many impact categories. So, a sensibility analysis was done to test the reduced electricity consumption of the pyrolysis unit by 15 and 30 percent. So, when the electricity consumption was reduced, the trade off is also reduced from 36 to 24 percent in the eutrophication freshwater impact category and from 24 to 12% in the cancer human health effect category. Here are the results for the remaining impact categories. As you can see, the fungicide is an important contributor in the ionizing radiation and the resource use energy carriers impact categories. So a uh, sensibility analysis was done to test the reduced efficiency of biofungicide. In that case, the dose could be increased by 1.5 or 2 times. The need for the increased dose of biofungicide causes an additional trade-off in the impact category resource use energy carriers, as less chemical fungicide is avoided for the same quantity of biomass spiralized. In conclusion, we found some key determinants for sustainable pyrolysis including the biochar carbon sequestration potential, the biomass nitrogen content, the efficiency of wood vinegar as a biofungicide, the marginal energy sources substituted by the bio crude oil, and the marginal electricity mix. The second objective of my project was to evaluate the impact of biomass properties and pyrolysis results on the environmental performance of pyrolysis biorefin. So, pyrosis tests were done at the IRDA using this auger pyrosis reactors of 0.5 to 1 kg per hour with the fractional condensation of the pyrosis vapors. First, three repetitions were done with the forestry residues using the optimal pyrosis parameters determined in the previous scenario. Then a response surface methodology design was done with Miscanthus to determine the optimal conditions for producing bio oil with lowest water content. And finally, the validation experiments were done with Miscanthus and Weedstra with the optimal conditions for producing a bio oil with low water content. Here are the results for the biomass characterization. 
First of all, in the scenario that I just presented, we use the typical forest biomass characterization with the ash content of 1.5%. In the pyrosis experiments, we use the real forestry residues and the ash content was very high at 8.3%. So here are the pyrosis results. Here we present the average of three pyrosis tests done with the optimal conditions that were determined in the scenario that just I just presented. We found that the biocrude oil is lower than what was expected in the scenario at 21% versus 36%. Moreover, the biocrude oil has a higher water content than what we expected at 18% versus 33%. According to the ASTM standard, the biocrude oil should have water content below 30%. Then the water content of the aqueous phase is also a lot higher at 74%. But the polyphenol is similar, even if the acetic acid content is lower. A box Bankian experimental design was done to determine the optimal pyrosis parameters to produce a biocrude oil with lowest water content. Three validations run were done with the miscanthus using the optimal pyrosis parameters. As compared to the prediction value for biocrude oil yield, the value is similar at 18.8%. However, the biocrude water content is a bit higher than what was predicted at 25.3%. However, when the tests were done with the same parameters but with straw, we saw that the biocrude yield is a lot lower and the biocrude water content is a lot higher. The hypothesis is because the cellulose content of these two biomasses is different. As you can see, the cellulose content of miscanthus is 48% as compared to 37.6 for straw. And according to literature, the cellulose usually produces more oil. The LCA evaluation of a pyrosis scenario using the products partition from experiments with forest residues will be done, and the results will be compared with the scenarios I presented before. Then the LCA evaluation of the miscanthus pyrosis scenarios using products partitions for a minimum and a maximum water content in biocrude will be compared in the sensitivity analysis. Finally, I will present the consequential LCA framework for HTL and CASI. Here is the process flow diagram of the HTL of forest residues. So the framework is similar to the one of pyrosis. The biomass is first collected in the wood and uh, it is mixed with water and catalyst prior to HTL. Then the process mass balance was based on six studies on the HTL of wood and the partitions of products is as follows. The main products with is, which is uh, biocrude is used in combustion for combustion in boiler the non-condensable gas is used for combustion and gas burner, and the hydrosure is used as a soil amendment. Moreover, there one problematic with HTL is the generation of large quantity of aqueous phase. So one part is recirculated in the process, and the other part is sent to anaerobic digestion for biogas production. Then the boundaries were expanded in order to include the marginal technologies that are used in the reference scenario. Finally, here is the process flow diagram for the gasification of forest residues. Here, the mass balance needs to be completed in order to include the outputs in gas composition that will be estimated in collaboration with Concheta Lodato through an equilibrium model using equations provided by Ferreria 2019. Thank you for your attention and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions.